Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and in today's video I'm going to show you how to calibrate the iris camera on the Epilogue Fusion Edge. Now this process should work for pretty much any iris camera on the Epilogue line. So with that in mind, let's get into it. Now, as for why I'm doing this video, I actually received a pre-production unit that didn't necessarily get all of the checks done on it during that process. And when I first did the camera calibration, I was ending up with a score of about maybe 0.8, uh, which was not great. And before that even, the, you could visibly see large differences in where the camera was versus where the artwork ended up. I wanted to go ahead and fix this with the camera calibration process and thought that it would be best to show you what that process looked like so that if you ever need to do it, you're familiar with it, you're familiar with the tricks in order to do it and things like that. Now for this, you will need a full sheet. So a 12 inch by 24 inch sheet for the Fusion Edge bed. I have a piece of black anodized aluminum that is about 0.025 thickness, I believe. And this actually came from Epilogue. Uh, they sent it to me to do this calibration video. So the first thing I wanna do is show you what the artwork looks like now when it gets set up and how it's a little bit off. And then I'm going to show you the calibration process, what that entails, and then show you the end result. When you're doing this, the score you wanna hit is between 0.5 and 0.6. And I'm sure I'll repeat that multiple times throughout the video. So that's the score you are looking for. The machine will engrave a calibration pattern that it needs. So because I've already done the calibration once, this is the pattern that it will do. So you'll see different artwork and different squares. This is what the camera needs to run this test. This process takes about 20 minutes or so. So make sure that you set that time aside. And with that in mind, let's go ahead and start the process. Here I have a snowflake design that I want to engrave. So I wanna start by running a test of the camera in the middle of the material and a test where I will put the image in the top left side of the material. To start, I'm gonna go ahead and print this graphic and I'm going to send it over to the machine. And once it's in the machine, I'm gonna go ahead and check the video box over on the left. So with the lid closed, I can see the video of where it's going to engrave. I'm going to change this to 400 for the DPI, a speed of 80%, power of 60%, and I'm going to engrave it from the bottom up. So first I want to engrave this image, see where it lands on the material. Keep in mind that the best spot to use the camera is going to be directly below the camera in the middle of the bed. Now that I've engraved the first one, if I zoom in, you can see that the graphic is slightly off from where the engraving is. And this is a key indication that you need to calibrate your camera. I'm about to run through the calibration of the camera and I wanna show you something that is supposed to help. So I talked to Epilogue and told them about a previous calibration I did that didn't quite hit the preferred number. So the preferred number is between 0.5 and 0.6 and I wasn't able to hit that number. They think it's because the piece of anodized aluminum that I was using was kind of bowed in a couple of places. So they had a suggestion that I want to show you. So here's their suggestion where you put down magnets to help hold the material flat onto the table. Now, in order to figure out where to place the magnets in this case, you kind of have to know the pattern of the calibration. So when you're going through this, you need to know on the Y direction where it is free and on the X direction where it is free. At the end of this, I will try to show where the engraving is so that you can use it as a reference point for where those patterns are. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and run this calibration again. 
and see what number I get. All right, to get to the camera calibration, you're going to hit the settings button in the top right, and then hold down on the settings banner up at the top. After that, I'm going to click on calibrate cameras. So after reading through this, it does suggest you use anodized aluminum. I booted up the compressor and the exhaust just in case. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. So now that I've finished machining, it's going through the calibration routine where it's trying to pick up all of the images that it engraved. The calibration just finished, so I'm going to show you the screen as well as the finished engraving so that you can get a reference for where you need to place magnets. All right, so you can see here my score is 0.56. So this does land in the 0.5 to 0.6 value. So this is a great score to have. So here's the actual pattern. If you look where I placed this magnet, it's at about three and a half inches on the X and about an inch and a half on the Y. So as I go through here, you'll be able to pause the screen and see where you can put magnets and where I put magnets. A lot of it depends on where your material is bowing or sticking up, but I have maybe nine magnets on here right now. So you can see one here here, here, down in the corner, one in the middle, one at the top, and then three kind of bundled over here. So on the Y axis, this one here is about six and a half down. And then all the way down here is about 10 down. So you can use this as a reference for your X and Y positions for where those engravings land. Now that I have the camera calibrated, I'm going to go ahead and just run an engraving test where I engrave the design show you where it is on the camera and see how well they line up. Here I have the design in the middle of the table. I'm going to go ahead and activate the camera by closing the lid. And this is where the graphic should end up. So right now, if I zoom in, there's not anything there. I'm going to engrave this. So I'm gonna do speed of 80, power of 50%. I'm going to use a Stucky dithering and going from the bottom up. So I'm going to send this over to the laser and machine this, and then I will come back and show you what the camera looks like. The engraving is finished, and if you look at the camera, if you zoom in far enough, you can't really tell where it is, but if I drag this out of the way, you can see the engraving. So this is a really good result for the camera positioning. Now, this is the best part of the table. So the middle right under the camera is the best place to do this. So I'm going to purposely put it in the worst spot, which is the top left corner. And I'm going to zoom in to that area. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to engrave it in this corner and just see how well it lines up in that spot. I'm going to engrave it and I will show you how it looks. Okay, I'm in the top left corner. The design just finished engraving. If I zoom in really far, you can kind of see that the design is just a little bit to the left of the graphic, but this is to be expected because this is the furthest point away from the camera. But if I drag this away, overall, this is still a really good result for that position of the table. When I say that the middle of the table is the best spot for positioning your artwork when it comes to putting it onto a design using the camera, 
let me show you what I actually mean by that. On the machine, the camera is right here. So if I lift this up and show you, this is the camera that is being shown inside that preview. So the camera is in the middle of the bed. Now keep in mind, if you're doing this, right below the camera is basically looking directly from the top down onto the material. So this is the most accurate spot of the bed. Once you get to the corners in the top left or top right, bottom, whatever it is, you're basically still looking from a camera here and you're trying to get an accurate image all the way over here just by how cameras are designed. They're not designed to be an overhead camera for the whole bed. It's really only this spot. So the accuracy of this top left corner is actually really good for where that is in relation to the camera. So just keep that in mind. If you're placing artwork onto a piece, right below the camera is going to be your best spot. I know this video was specific to how to calibrate the Epilog Iris camera, but the same concepts hold true for many other machines that have cameras where the middle of the bed or directly below the camera is going to be your most accurate spot. Anywhere that's in the corners will probably be your least accurate spot. Now, in this case, as I mentioned before, a good score for the calibration on the Iris camera is between 0.5 and 0.6. So in this instance, once I left the material flat and used magnets to hold it down, I received a score of 0.56, which is in that range and is good. So that's what you're shooting for with the Epilogue cameras. So now the camera is all calibrated and ready to go. Uh, in a future video, I'm actually going to go over using the camera more in depth and show some projects where it applies and show you some tricks that you can do with it. But I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notifications to know when I come out with a new video. And be sure to follow me on Instagram where I share tips, tricks, and what I'm working on along the way. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this, and I'll see you in the next video.